we're gonna start talking about the advanced SQL joins and now we're gonna cover the first part the lift anti-join so let's see what this means Okay, so now what is exactly a lift anti-join? Now in this mechanism, we want to return rows from the left side, the left table that has no match in the right table. So now by looking to our two circles from the left table, we want to see only the unmatching rows. So only rows that exist in table A, but it don't exist in the table B. So if there is like matching data, we don't want to see it. And now from the right table, we don't want anything. We don't want any data. So that means the only source of your data going to be the left table and from the right table we don't need any data we are just joining the tables to do a check to filter the data so now for the syntax this can be interesting we don't have a special type called left anti join at least in the sql server we still can create this effect since we are saying left we can use the type left join and then as usual the join condition with the keys but now if you leave it like this you will get the effect of the left join and we don't want that because with the left join you will get the complete circle from the left table but now in order to remove the matching data this overlapping in the middle what we can do we can use a filter and in order to filter the data we use the where clause so now in order to get rid of the matching data we can take the key from the right table and we say the key must be null so if the key is null so that means there is no match on the right side and if you do it like this you will get the effect of the left anti-join only the data in the left that has no match on the right so now let's go in SQL and create this effect okay so now we have the following task and it says get all customers who haven't placed any order so now by looking to this query clearly we are focusing on the table customers but we want to see the customers that didn't order anything so they are in our database but the customers are inactive now there are like different ways on how to solve this task but we're gonna solve it using the joins now let's go and start by just writing a very simple query where we are selecting everything from the table customers now you can see this is our five customers and now i want to check which of those customers didn't order anything yet now since we are talking about the orders we can go and join it with the table orders so we're gonna say left join the table orders as O, and then we're gonna go and connect the tables using the ids with the customer id so now if you go and execute it now we are still seeing all the customers because we are using the left join and now we can see the orders informations of each customer and you can see immediately those two customers didn't order anything because we are seeing here nulls right so they are empty there is no orders now we can use this information in order to filter the data i just want to see martin and peter so what you can do we can go and say where and all what you have to do is to take the key that we are using in order to join the tables this is this one over here and say this must be null so is null so if you see it like this that means you want to see the data if the customer id is null so let's go and execute it perfect now you are getting the customers who haven't ordered anything and this is exactly the effect that we wanted the left anti-join we are getting the data from the left side where there are no match on the right side so you have always to do it in two steps first join the data as you normally do using the classical joins the left join and then the second step you go and use a filter using the where clause if you do it like this you can and check for not existence and with that we are getting the effect of the left anti-join so that's it okay so now if you are looking to this picture i think you already know where we use the left anti-join we're gonna use it only on the last use case where we are checking the existence so if you use the left join together with the where you can check for the not existence of your data in another table so this is exactly for this scenario all right so that's all about the left anti-join now we're gonna speak about the exact opposite of that we will cover the right anti-join so it's gonna be very similar but we are just switching sides so let's go okay so now what is exactly the right anti-join well it is the opposite of the left anti-join so we want to return the rows from the right table that has no match in the left table so again if we are looking to our two circles now what is important is the right table we want to see only the unmatching rows from the right table so only the rows that exist in b but not in a and from the left table we don't need anything so no data is needed and that means the only source of data comes from the 
the right table and you are using the left table as a filter as a lookup just in order to check the existence so now the syntax of that's going to be very similar to the left anti-join so we don't have a special type called right anti-join we have to use the classical one the right join but if you do that you will get everything from the right table and now in order to get rid of the matching data in the middle we use a filter we use the where clause where we say we are interested only on the unmatching data so we take the key from the left table and we say the key from left is null and if you do that you will get rid of any matching data is null means there is no match and again here the same thing the order of the tables is very important since here we are talking about sides and you have to do it correctly okay so now the task says get all orders without matching customers so now it is exactly the opposite we want to see all the orders that don't have a valid customer so this is really bad scenario you have in your business orders without a valid customers so let's see how we can discover that using sql joins now as you can see we are focusing completely on the orders it's not the customers anymore and we want to see only the orders where there is no match with the customers so now again here we have two steps the first step we're gonna go and do the normal join so using either the left or the right join now by looking to this query you can leave it like this where you can start from the customers but if you want to fully focus on the orders you have to switch this from left to right and with that you will get all the orders and only the matching customers and let's go and remove this where clause from here first so i'm just adding comments and with that sql gonna totally ignore this line of code so let's go and execute it now you can see we are getting all the orders right and data from customers only if there is a match and now of course this is not the task we don't want to see all the orders we want to see only the orders where we don't have a match from the customers so if you look to this those three orders they are okay they are totally fine we are finding customers for them so they have valid customers but this order here is really bad so there is no valid customer for this order and now our task to show only this type of orders in the result now what we have to do we have to use the where clause in order to get exactly the effect so this time we're gonna say if the id of the customer here so here we're gonna say the id of the customer from the table customers must be null so we're gonna remove this here and take the key join from the customer and we are saying this id must be null so let's go and execute it perfect with us we have solved the task and we are getting the effect of that right anti-join and we are getting now those orders that don't have any customers so we have solved the task now my friends you have to go and solve this task without using the right join but still you have to get the same effect you want to get exactly those orders without customers so pause the video and go solve the task Now again, as you know me, I don't like the right joins. We can create the same effects if you switch the sides of the table. So if you say the B table now on the left side and the A on the right side, then we will get the same effect if you go and switch the type of join from right to left and you go just switch the tables. So you start from the B table since it's on the left side and then join it with the A. And we still say, of course, in our work condition where the data from A is null. So there is no match. So if you do this, you will get the exact same result results like the left query by using the left join and just switching the tables so you will get the same results and with that you know that in SQL we have always alternatives I hope that you are done so it's very simple what you're gonna do we're gonna go and switch the joins and since the orders is the main table we're gonna start first from the table orders so we are putting it on the left side and then the right table gonna be the customers and of course the condition gonna stay as it is we want to see the orders where there is no customer so we don't have to switch anything here or on the join key so let's go and execute it with that you are getting the same exact results since we are using here the star it's always starts from the left table and show the data from the right table but still the result is valid we are getting this type of orders without matching customers and i prefer this way all right so now with that we have the left the right and now of course what is next we will get the full so let's speak about now the full anti-join in sql let's go Okay, so now what is exactly a full anti-join? Well, this time we don't have sides. We want to return only the rows that don't match in either tables. So what this means, if you are looking to the left circle, we want only the unmatching rows. So we don't want the whole circle. We want only the data that exists in A, but it don't exist in B on the right table. Sounds like the left anti-join. But since we are saying full, then you have to do the same thing on the right side as well. So on the right table, we want only the unmatching rows. So 
So we want to see in the result the data that is in B, but don't have a match from A. So it's exactly the opposite. And if you look to this, then that means we want to see only the unmatching data. And this is exactly the opposite effect of the inner join. In the inner join, we were interested only on the matching data, only when there is like overlapping. But now with the full anti-join, it is exactly the opposite. We don't want to see the matching data. We want to see everything else, the unmatching data. So how are we going to write this query? Again, here we don't have a special type called full anti-join. We will use the help of the classical full join. So the basic one. So you start from A, full join B, and then the same key. But now what is interesting is about the where condition. Now we have like two conditions, right? So now in order to get all data from A that has no match in B, you have to make a filter where you say the key from the B table must be null. And now since we want the exact same thing from the right table, we want all the data in B that has no match in A, you have to say as well, the key from the A table must be null. So now we have here like two conditions. And in SQL, if you have like two conditions in the where clause, you have here two options, either use and operator or the or operator. So now the one that we're going to use here is the or operator. So either the key from right is empty or the key from left is empty. If you do it like this, you will get the effect of the full anti-join. And of course, since here both sides are equal, then the order of the tables as well here is not that important. So you can say from A full join B or from B full join A. It doesn't matter. So now let's go back to scale in order to create this effect. Okay, so now we have the following task and it says find customers without orders and orders without customers. So if you are looking to this, this means we want to see only the unmatching data from customers and as well from orders. There is no main table and secondary table. Both of them are equally important. So now since we are talking about the unmatching data and the anti-join, we have to do it in two steps. The first step we're going to do the classical join and then we focus on the where clause. So let me remove the where clause to make it as a comment. Now since we want the data from left and right, we're going to go and use the full join. So let's go and execute it. Now you can see we are getting the effect of the full join. We are getting all the orders and as well all the customers. But now we are interested only on the strange cases where there are like orders without customers like this one here and as well customers without orders. So that means the first three rows, they are not really interesting for us because it is boring. We have here matching data and this is totally fine, but we are not focusing on that now. We are focusing on only if there is like missing data from left or from right. As you notice, I'm saying OR. And this is very important because we're going to use the OR operator. So now let's focus on getting this scenario over here. We want to get an order without a customer. So that means the customer ID must be null. And we have it already here. So we are saying where the ID of the customer is null. So if I go and execute it, I will get only one record. Only this one over here. But as well, I want to get the opposite scenario. So in this scenario, the customer ID must be null. So we're going to say or the customer ID in the orders is null. Or we can do it like side by side like this. Either the right side is null or the left side is null. So if you go and execute it, you will get the effect of the full anti-join. And with that, we are finding the customers without orders and orders without customers. I think this is really fun and as well really easy. So this is how we do the full anti-join. All right, so now if you are looking to the use cases, we use the full anti-join again exactly for the last use case in order to check the existence. So if you combine the full with the where, you can check the existence or the not existence of your data in another table. So this is exactly the scenario for that. Okay, my friends, now we have a bonus section where I'm going to challenge you to solve the following task without using an inner join. So it says get all customers along with their orders, but only for customers who have placed an order, but without using an inner join. So pause the video now and go and solve this task. Okay, so now let's see how we're gonna solve this. We want the customers, the orders, blah, blah, blah. But we want only the customers who have placed an order. Previously, we have used the inner join in order to solve this task, but this time we are not allowed to use it. So let's go and solve it. This is how I'm gonna do it. Select star from table customers and give it the alias. So now I'm getting all the customers, but I am interested only the customers who have placed an order. So as we know before, there is like two customers that didn't order anything and we don't want to see them 
in the final results. Now, how we will get that? Well, we can use the help of the table orders in order to check the existence of our customers there. And of course, I'm not allowed to use the inner join. So I'm going to go and use a left join with the table orders and then combine them as usual. Nothing new with the customer ID. So now let's go and execute it. As you can see, we are doing it step by step. You don't have to rush everything in one go. So you start simple, check the results and decide on the next step. So now by looking to these results, I want to get those three customers because they have ordered something and we are seeing data about their orders. And I don't want to get in the result the last two. So again, we still can use the customer ID from the right table in order to decide which data going to stay in the result and which data should be filtered. We're going to go and use the where clause and then the key from the orders. And this time we're going to say is not null. I know we didn't learn yet about the not and the logical operators, but using the not null, it means there should be data inside the column. It must not be null. If you do it like this and execute, you will get the exact effect as the inner join. So as you can see, as you are joining the tables using the left join, you can control what you want to see using the where clause using the filter. And this is how you can solve this task without using an inner join. Okay, so with that, you have covered all those three scenarios in order to find the unmatching data, left, right, full, and the joins. Now we can speak about one crazy join. We call it the cross join. This one is totally different from all other types that we have learned. So let's understand exactly what is the cross join. Let's go. So now what is exactly a cross join? Now in some scenarios, we want to combine every row from the left, every row from the right. So that means I want to see all the possible combinations from both tables. So we are doing something called like Cartesian join. So now if we look to our two circles, we want everything from A and as well everything from B. So that means I want to see everything from A combined with everything with B. So in this example, we have two rows in A and three rows in B. If you do a cross join, you will get six possible combinations by just multiplying the number of rows between A and B. So be careful using the cross join. If you use it, you will get like crazy number of rows in the results. And you're going to make the database really busy finding out the result for you. So now about the syntax, it's going to be the easiest. So you start as usual from one of those tables, the A for example, and then you say cross join B. So now my friends, if you look at this, you can see it's not like the previous joins that we have done. We have always before talked about unmatching rows, matching rows and so on. But here we don't care at all about whether the data is matching or not. I just want to see all the possible combinations, everything. So since we don't care about matching the two tables, we don't have to specify any condition. So there is no need to use the keyword on because we don't need any condition. So that's it. You just say cross join B and the magic can happen. So this is the cross join. Let's go to SQL to try that. Okay, so now we have the following task. It's says generate all possible combinations of customers and orders. So that means we want everything with everything using the cross join. And this is going to be very simple. So we're going to start with select star from whatever table. So you can start from the customers and then you say cross join orders. That's it. Very simple. Let's go and execute it. So now, as you know, we have five customers and four orders. And if you multiply them, you will get in the results 20 rows. So now we are getting everything with everything, even if the data is not matching at all. So you can see, for example, the orders here. So this is one order that belongs only to one customer, the customer ID one. So it is an order from actually Maria, but still we are seeing this same order with the other customers since we want to combine everything with everything. So there are no rules. The same thing for the next set. So this is the second order actually belongs to John, but we are seeing this order with all customers. So that's it. This is how the cross join works. And now you might ask me why we have this. It makes no sense, right? Well, my friends, I rarely use it, but sometimes if I want to generate like test data, or maybe if you have like, for example, table called colors and table called products, and you'd like to see all the combinations between the products and the colors. So in some scenarios, it makes really sense to see all your products together with all the colors without any matching conditions or whatever. So there are like few scenarios for the cross join if you are like doing simulations or testing. So this is how we do the cross join. Okay, so that's all about the cross join and with that you have covered the four advanced types of joins.